Hello everyone, we've been solving logs, now we're going to solve some logs with some context. So we're going to do some word problems here. These models are pretty fun. I like these questions. So if I give you a model, this one I'm telling you, hey, that's how many bacteria are in the culture or whatever after a certain amount of hours. If I say what's the initial amount, you could do this two ways. You could plug in t equals zero, but then realize you're going to have e to the zero, which is one, and that's 500 times one, it's 500. Remember the formula, p e to the rt, p is the initial amount. 500 bacteria. After three hours, 500 E, 0.45, T is three. So this is pure calculator work. We're just gonna plug in three. So I'll take my calculator, 500 E to the 0.45 times three, and you get 1928.71, 1928.71, 1928. So 0.71, actually, you can't have that many bacteria. We're gonna have to round up. Any population, it doesn't matter that this is bigger than 0.5, we're rounding up. If it's a population, any decimal goes up. So 1929 bacteria. Now that next question now is working backwards. If you have Desmos, you could graph it. But I want you to use your calculator, not Desmos. So we're going to write this equation where now we know what the population is. We know the output, which is 10,000. And we're going to try and solve this e to the 0.45t. We're going to solve for t. This is the whole reason that we have logarithms, is to solve for variables in the exponent. First thing I'm going to do is divide by 500. So I'm going to use my calculator, 10,000 divided by 500. Okay. Wait, not 5,000. I, I know it's going to be 20. I just want to get the number in my calculator there. So 20. So now I have 20 equals e to the 0.45t. Now, you can think of this two ways. You can think of this as rewriting it as a logarithm, or you can think about it as taking the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to, for the first one, I'm going to say I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. The reason I'm doing the natural log is you have a base e exponent. I want to undo that with a base e logarithm. The left side isn't going to be nice. It's going to be the natural log of 20. But the right side, the natural log of e to the 0.45t, think about it. e to something is e to this power. It's just 0.45t. You can bring the exponent out. And that, like using your rules, this exponent comes down, and the natural log of e is 1 because e to the first is 1. So what happens is these cancel out and you just get the exponent. Now you can solve for t by dividing. So I'm going to take the natural log of 20 and I'm going to divide by 0.45 and then that means 6.66 hours. In about 6.66 hours, you will have the amount of bacteria you want, which is 10,000. 6.66 hours. Now you can check that by using your model 500 e to the 0.45, and I'll just say, I'm going to, I know I'm rounding, but let's just say 6.657. I could click it, but I want to use them all. 9999, yeah. So you can see how I round a little bit, but I have a good model. So I know I did it right. After about 6.6 .6 hours, you should expect to see 10,000 bacteria. All right. What about, this is a fox population problem. So the first thing we have to do is create the model. So we're using this formula. The initial amount is 18,000. R, the growth rate, is 100% plus 8%. So 108%. This is 1.08. And then we'll say to the T, we're trying to figure out after a certain amount of time. So the first one is from the year 2000 to the year 2008. So I'll say 18,000 times 1.08, eight years. 33,317, 33317, 33317. Again, it's a population, so any population that I have, I'm going to round up. Okay, 33316.7, even if it was 0.14, I would round up to 17. So we have a little over 33,000 foxes, and now the next question is, when will we, does that have an E in it? Foxes, 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 foxes. That can't be right. All right. 40,000. 40,000 equals 18,000 times 1.08 to the T. So I'll divide 40,000 divided by 18,000. 
Now I have 2.2222. So 2.2 repeating is 1.08 to the t. 2.2 repeating is 1.08 to the t. To undo this, I'm going to take a base 1.08 logarithm of both sides. Which is kind of silly, but you'll see why that helps me. Now, if you do a base 1.08 log and a base 1.0 exponent, you just get t. So all I have to do is type this into my calculator, and I'll do it two ways. I'll use my math base button, if you have one. So 1.08 to the, I'll actually click the 2.2 so I don't round. Good that. Or you could do the log of 2.2222 divided by the log of 1.08 using the change of base formula. Same thing, we should get the same answer, 10.375. 10.375. Now what is this? 10.375 years? So 10.4 years. What year would that be? 2010 something. We started in 2000. 10 years later, 2010 something. The last type of question that we need to be able to do is Newton's Law of Cooling. Now, for Newton's Law of Cooling problem, I am going to give you this formula every time. You do not need to have it memorized. However, you do need to know how to use it. And I will tell you where the most common mistake is when I go through the variables. We are trying to find the temperature of some object after it's been sitting out for a little while. So this is the first one's like a bowl of soup problem. If we know the temperature of the soup and we know the temperature of the room, we can figure out how the bowl will cool if we have some constant. And I will always give you the constant. Here it's the negative 0.05. But I will give you the constant and I will give you the formula. It's your job to then use it. So the trick to this is D sub 0 is the initial temperature difference. It's not the initial temperature. It's the initial temperature difference. So you need to know the temperature of the object, and then you need to know the difference. And if you look, in this problem, D sub 0 is 145. So the initial temperature difference is 145 degrees. That is the initial temperature, so I'll say like T sub I, minus 65. It's cooled down to 65 degrees. Or no, this is the temperature of the surrounding. TS is the temperature of the surrounding. It's 145 degrees different than 65 degrees. So the way of thinking about that is add 65, and the initial amount would be 210 degrees. It's 145 degrees different. So you can write a formula. D sub 0 is the initial temperature of the initial minus the temperature of the surrounding. And we know D sub 0 is 145. We don't know the temperature of the initial. And we do know the temperature of the surrounding is 65. So that's what all this stands for. It's 210 degrees because that's 145 degrees cooler or warmer than 65. After 10 minutes, I'm just going to plug in 10. T of 10. So this is too many. 10. There you go. So 65 plus 145 e to the negative 0 0.05 times 10. I'm just plugging it into this formula. 65, maybe, 65 plus 145e to the negative 0 0.05 times 10, 152.95 degrees, so 152.95 degrees, 152.95, so think about it, it's sitting out, it's 210 degrees, our, our bowl of soup is sitting there, it's 210 degrees, 10 minutes later we come back, it's 152 degrees, so it's cooled down pretty substantially. Now, the next question is when will it be 100? So I have to write an equation, I have to work backwards. I have to say 100 is the temperature that I know, 65 is the surrounding temperature, 145 is the difference, e to the negative 0.05, the only thing I don't know is t. So to solve this, the first thing you need to do is subtract 65 on both sides, 35 equals this, then I'll divide by 145, 0. 0.2414. So essentially what I have is 0. 0.2414 equals E to the negative 0. 0.05 T. I subtracted and then I divide it. Now I need to get rid of this base E exponent, so I will use a base E logarithm. And when you do that on the right side, you just get the exponent. 
So it's the natural log of 0.2414 divided by negative 0.05. So the natural log of this number, oops, there you go, divided by negative 0.05. When you solve the equation, you get t equals 28.4, we'll say it's just 28.4. 28.4 minutes. T equals 28.4 minutes. So after 28 minutes, the soup that was once 210 degrees will now be 100 degrees. Let's do one where you have to write the equation because I think that'll help you understand this d sub zero thing better. So last one, um, I have the formula. I'm gonna actually going to screenshot that because I'm not going to flip back and forth over and over again. So let me take this guy. Copy, come here, cut, next, paste. So I don't have to keep flipping back and forth. There you go. I will give you this formula every time. So the first thing we're going to do is write the equation. What do we know? T of S is the temperature of the surrounding. Do we know that in this problem? This is a like a body is cooling. We're trying to figure out when the person died. Right now, the temperature surrounding is 60 degrees. So 60 plus. D sub zero is the difference between the body temperature when it started and the temperature of the surrounding. So 98.6 minus 60 is 38.6. And now that's to the negative. Do we have a K, a constant? Yep, 0.1947 T. So this is our model. Temperature after T minutes is this. If the body temperature is now 72, when did the person die? 72 is an output. 72 equals 60 plus 38.6, negative 0.1947 T. So what I'm doing is I know a temperature is 72. I'll plug in 72. <clears throat> now I'm going to subtract 72 minus 60. That gets you this by itself. So divide by 38.6. And we got 0 0.3109. So Oops, go back. This is like saying 0 0.3109 equals 38.6. No, no, no. Equals, oh, wait a minute. I can't do that. I messed this up. I'm sorry. First, we're going to subtract and get 12. 38.6. I need an E in there. I didn't write the E. Look at the model. E, it's E. D sub 0 times E to the whatever. So 38.6 e to the negative 0.1947 I will go back and divide. So I get 0 0.3109, but it's 0 0.3109 equals e to the power of there. Now we'll take the natural log of both sides. <clears throat> so the natural log of 0 0.3109 is the natural log of this will just be the exponent. That's the whole point. We're undoing base e exponent using a base e log. And then you divide. So the natural log of that decimal, you don't want to round, divided by negative 0.1947 will give us our time, which is, wow, really close to six. So about six hours. The person died six hours ago. It's a word problem. The person died about six hours ago. There you go. Word problem, word answer. Great. So the main thing here is you understand if you have a base E exponent, you undo that with a base E log. The tricky thing is when you're doing Newton's law of cooling, that number is not the body temperature at the beginning. It's the body temperature difference. So just be careful. If you got all that, you can hit that study guide and hit that like and subscribe.